chapter 3. We'll read the, the last, or actually not the last, but two of the last three verses, verses 14 and 15 of 1 Timothy chapter 3. Paul writes to Timothy, says, These things write out unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Let's pray. Well, again, we praise you for this night together, for a chance again to be in your house and to worship you. We praise you for this word tonight as we open it in front of us and pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit would guide us in it. Lord, that uh, we would take this and and love it and take this and live it. We would allow it to work and change us in our hearts and work to the outside of what you've already done on the inside that we might be a living example to all those that we come in contact with and that Lord, we might shine out the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. We love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 1 Timothy chapter 3, if you were to go back and begin reading the beginning of it, you would recognize it. It's uh, the qualifications of a, a bishop or an overseer or a pastor in the first seven verses. And then verses 8 through 13, you get the qualifications of a deacon. Uh, if you come to Sunday school and you're here when we go through 1 Timothy or through Titus, when he covers it there, you would remember that. If you've ever been to ordination service, those verses get used uh, in, in every ordination service that you've ever been to. But 
it, that, those are quite uh, uh, familiar verses, but after having said all of that, Paul tells this to Timothy in our text. And he's, he's written these things, not just chapter 3, but everything he's written in 1 Timothy up to this point, uh, hoping that he could uh, come to him shortly, but if he's not able to get there, he's laying out how you ought to behave, and that means the conduct and how you conduct the church, church services, how you put, choose, and put people in leadership roles, and how you obey uh, the, the verses and the scripture of God's word, and it's all of that ties into what he's talking about here, about behaving thyself in the house of God. Tonight, I want to just look at what he says at the end of that, verse 15, about the house of God, which is the church of the living God, and then he gives this phrase, the pillar and ground of the truth. Church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Architecturally speaking, in Paul and Timothy's day, pillars were not just things uh, that were ornate and pretty and looked good, but they were foundations and strengths for a building. And so Paul is talking about the strength or the stability or the structure or the foundation that serves as strong for something to be able to stand the pillar and ground of the truth. The only true foundation is the truth. And so the church is the pillar and the foundation and the strength, the buttress, as some translations say, of the truth. Several years ago, on Wednesday, August the 1st of 2007, at 6.05 p.m. in the height of rush hour in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the bridge that takes Interstate 35 over the Mississippi River collapsed in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was a bridge that 140,000 cars a day passed over. It was a, a four-lane steel bridge that collapsed and fell 80 feet down and, into the Mississippi River. Uh, Brad, would you throw a picture up there? There it is of the, the collapse of that bridge. Again, at the height of rush hour with a lot of folks on it, that gigantic steel bridge structure that had been built in 1967 and had been in use for 40 years collapsed. 111 vehicles were damaged. 98 people got hurt, 13 people tragically lost their life in that accident. After months of thorough investigation, the National Transportation Safety Board determined that the reason that bridge collapsed and the reason of the fail was because of a gusset plate. What's a gusset plate? Right, we throw a gusset plate up there. You, you've seen them, you just might not know that's what they were called. That little square right in the middle of where all of those girders come together, where it is riveted in, it's called a gusset plate. <coughs> a gusset plate underneath that bridge ripped, and when it ripped and failed, it, it caused the entire structure to then fail, fall, and collapse. If Brad will throw in the next couple of them up there, you'll see where one of those ripped and caused everything else to start coming down. I believe I got one more, Brad, that a little up close. You'll see that, that gusset plate. In determining what was wrong with it and why it failed, it was simply this. It was one half inch too thin. One half inch too thin to truly support the weight that was on that bridge because over the years they had added concrete to it. On that day there was a little bit more weight than was normal. But had that plate been one half inch thicker, that bridge would have never fail. 111 cars would have never fallen 80 feet into the Mississippi River. 98 people wouldn't have got hurt. 13 people. When they've lost their life. 
one half inch of a steel plate failing and causing that bridge to collapse. When we go over bridges, we never think of that. You don't, you don't look under the bridge as you're driving over and wonder, is everything under that bridge okay? Because all our lives we've driven over bridges and, and they're fine. Nothing to them. You just take it for granted. You're going to drive over it. 140,000 cars a day drove over the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis, Minnesota for 40 years. Never a problem. Until that fateful night in August of 2007 where one small problem with the support, <clears throat> the structure, the buttress, the strength of that bridge failed and caused that horrible, horrible accident. Foundations are important. Foundations and stability are crucial. This coming week, we're installing foundations. This coming week, we're building stability. We're establishing pillars and ground of truth, like Paul told Timothy. The only everlasting foundation that never fails and never collapses is the truth of God. And his word tells us what the truth is. John chapter 14, familiar scripture that we've heard all our lives beginning of that section, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. When you get to verse 6, after Thomas has said, well, how can we know the way, Lord? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, I mean cometh unto the Father, but by me. Jesus is the truth. <coughs> John chapter 8, just a couple of chapters before that, Verse 31 said, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. And then we all know the next part. And the truth shall make you free. Or we like to say the truth will set you free. You know Jesus. You know the truth. Jesus is the truth. We also know that his word is the truth. Paul puts it this way in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. I've heard Brad reference this before, both in his preaching and praying before he preaches. Study that show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, if Jesus is the truth, we know the word is the truth, but Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word, so if Jesus is the truth, the Word is the truth. When Jesus is praying to God in John chapter 17, right at the end of his life on the night before he will be crucified, he prays this in John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them, all those who would be saved. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Our church is founded and based on the truth. Amen? Amen. And our children need to know the truth. So big deal, preacher. What's, what's the big deal? Is it really that big a deal? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight, yes, it is a big deal. Preaching the truth. Establishing the truth. Creating a firm foundation. Creating a pillar. Creating a buttress. Creating a true grounding for our kids. Because the world today hates the truth. It cannot stand the truth because the devil hates the truth and the devil's in charge of this world. The push of the educated elite over the last 150 years has been to do away with the truth. Uh, there is no universal 
truth. A lot of people don't realize this, but this has been an intended or unintended, depending on which side of the fence you stand on, but a true effect of the teaching of evolution. Because if you can teach and convince people that evolution is real, then there's no creator. If there's no creator, then that means logically there's no God. If there's no God, there's no truth or standard you have to live by. If there's no truth or standard to live by, then there's no judgment to live into it since there is none. So with no judgment, there's no hell. And so you can act how you want to act, be who you want to be, talk like you want to talk, and the truth is left up to each individual. You don't tell me I'm wrong because you don't know I'm wrong. I might be right and you're wrong. Well, no, that's not right. I know the truth. There is no truth. Truth is left up to the individual. And as crazy and stupid as that sounds, that is where we're at in the world today. Yeah. There is no truth. That's exactly what they want you to believe. Because then, you can sin all you want. And while you're sinning, you better not call me out for it. Because if you do, you're closed-minded and ignorant, and you're not accepting, and I'm going to cancel you because you're not being very nice to me. Because you're calling me out and calling me a sinner, and there is no such thing as sin because there's no God and there's no creation because we all came from monkeys. You know, that's, that's crazy to tie all that together to a line. But in actuality, that's where it's led to, and that's why we're at where we're at. The devil has done a tremendous job in convincing many, many, many people that this is fiction, that there is no God, there is no standard, there is no truth. You say, well, I wonder if I ever thought it was really going to turn out this way. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because the Bible says it will be that way. Now, this is a kind of a long section, but Brad, would you, would you hit us up with Romans 1? I know it's long, but when you just sit back and think about it, you'll understand why we're at where we're at. Paul said we were headed that way. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I will stop there for a second. Who hold the truth. That means, that doesn't mean that they love the truth and they're lifting up the truth. Okay? I, I'm going to use Valerie because I'm married to her and I'll keep getting in trouble. Stand up, Valerie. If I hold Valerie, that's one hold, right? If I hold Valerie, that's another hold. I got to be rough. I'm not going to count. <laughs> that's the holding that Paul's talking about in Romans 1. He's not talking about holding the truth. He's talking about holding down the truth. He's talking about suppressing the truth. So that verse, when it says that it is against all unrighteousness and men who hold the truth and they suppress the truth. They say there is no truth. They try to destroy the truth. They try to say that there's no such thing as the truth. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. That's where we're headed. This is how we got to where we are. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Do you realize that the, the highest and best universities in the United States, the Ivy Leagues, the Harvards, the Yales, the Princetons, the Columbias, they all started as basically seminaries, teaching God's Word. 
far from it as you can be now. Because as they got wise, they became fools and pushed the truth out and introduced this idea of and joined on the bandwagon of there is no real truth. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Well, we've gotten to this. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the nat their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And our country is celebrating it. Wow. It's Pride Month. It's going to hell month. Is what it is. Yeah. YouTube will cancel this one out, Brad. Don't even, not, don't even put it on there. And even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Yeah. That's how we got where we're at. Paul said it almost 2,000 years ago when he wrote it down through the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 1. And how did it get to this point? It got to this point from men holding the truth, suppressing the truth, not holding the truth, holding the truth, and changing the truth of God into a lie. This coming week is important because all our kids hear all the time from this world is lie, lie, lie. Kind of like we heard this morning video. Da, da, da. Lie, lie, lie. lie. <laughs> It's all they hear. It's time for them to hear the truth. And they're not going to get the truth out there. They're not. And unfortunately, they're not always going to get the truth inside a church. But they will get the truth inside the church. The church of the living God that has a firm foundation that has the truth, that has, as Paul told Timothy, pillars and ground in the truth. When you allow no truth, you got no foundation. You got no pillar. You got nothing good. What you got is, Brad, would you throw one more picture up there of that torn up bridge? When there ain't any truth, that's what you get. And that's what happens. And folks, that's our world. On the right side. We need our church to be that side over on the left side. It's imperative that truth goes out this week. That we pray for every teacher, for every helper. It don't matter if you're teaching a class it's got 25 kids in it, or you're in charge of the Kool-Aid and the cookies, or you're in charge of taking up the money and doing the attendance, or if you're just here in Eddie's class waiting on who's teaching us tonight. 
it is imperative that we all pray for each other, lift each other up, and pray that during this week, the pillar and ground of the truth goes out and settles in our folks this week. Yeah. The pillar and ground of truth. Instead of lie, 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 we need to pray, pray, pray. Pray as Jesus did. Sanctify them through thy truth. The world hates truth and promotes turning away from truth. Paul will write just a little after this in his last letter, both his last letter and his last letter to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 in the first four verses, we know the scripture. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead in his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. That's what we're doing this week. Oh, preacher, we don't preach. You have to preach. No, preach the word. Proclaim it. That's what we're doing this week. We are proclaiming the word of God, the word of truth, the gospel. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, and boy, it's here. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Folks, we need to be praying <coughs> that the truth goes out this week and settles in the hearts of our kids and our folks here in this church. The only foundation that holds. We know that the time of itching ears are here. I want to close with a couple of quotes. So just bear with me while I read this. In talking about those itching ears that Paul warned Timothy about. The ears were already itching in his day and they certainly haven't stopped in ours. Our society has only given us more ways than ever to have our itches scratched. Books, podcasts, social media, Facebook, YouTube, and more. All constantly vying for our attention and devotion. Has it ever been easier to accumulate teachers to suit our unique passions, lusts, and fears? Has it ever been easier to wander after whatever's trending and away from the truth. This puts significant pressure on church leaders to scratch the same itches, to build churches and plan services and develop programs that compete with what people love and follow online. Now, to this point, not like we talked about this morning, not turning into the world, but competing against the world to provide the gospel and the truth in a way that it goes out and it's felt in hearts. For our part, we may start choosing or leaving churches based on the Sunday morning experience rather than whether they preach, live, and love what God says. Because that's what the church is supposed to do. You read that again. We may start choosing or leaving churches based on the Sunday morning experience experience rather than whether they preach, live, and love what God says. The demand for entertainment suddenly slides from the screens to the pew and truth moves from the center of our life together to the margin. Now I want to read one more thing. J.I. Packer wrote this. What makes the church a pillar and a buttress of the truth, she holds up and lives out what God has said. Whatever God has said, however he has said it, and whatever it means for us. Doctrinal preaching, preaching the truth, preaching the word. Doctrinal preaching certainly bores the hypocrites, but it's only doctrinal preaching that will save Christ's sheep. The preacher's job is to proclaim the faith, not provide entertainment for unbelievers. I'm going to read that again. 
The preacher's job is not to proclaim the faith. I'm sorry. The preacher's job is to proclaim the faith, not to provide entertainment for unbelievers. And he puts in, I love this. I'm going to close with this one. In other words, to feed the sheep rather than amuse the goats. <laughs> to feed the sheep rather than amuse the goats. Yeah. Let's be in the business of feeding the sheep this week. Let's not worry about amusing the goats. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Why do these get to the verse of invitation? Open the altar up tonight. If you'd like to come and pray, we'd love to pray with you tonight. Sure, we're doing things as safe as we can do. Rock